my name's Michelle and this is my 2023 Lolita wardrobe post. I had really wanted to get this done in January but I sold a couple of pieces and gained a couple of pieces right at the start of the year so I wanted to wait for the dust to settle before I filmed. Uh, thankfully everything has come in now so I hope you enjoy. So same as last year each of my main pieces is stored on this rack. I'm starting to think I might need another one for main pieces in the near future. Um, but I'm just going to go through each main piece one by one, giving my brief thoughts and some information about each of them. As a plus size Lolita, I really want to help other plus size Lolitas find pieces that might work for them, so I'll try to give some sizing information or information on alterations I've had done on each of the pieces. <music> Starting off with a fairly recent addition to my wardrobe, this is Little Squirrel by Metamorphose. You're going to hear the name Metamorphose a lot in this wardrobe tour. All but two of my main pieces are from Meta, so unless stated otherwise, you can assume it's from there. Um, Little Squirrel is a dress that I have not worn yet because I still need to have it altered, um, but I am looking forward to wearing it in the future. It's probably the most sort of cottage core or forest core kind of piece in my wardrobe. I would say that forests and mushrooms are not motifs that I am typically drawn to, but there is something about this piece that I just adore. Um, there's a lot of great details in this piece. For example, it has a faux fur collar with pearls embedded in it. It has all of these different types of bows on the bodice and bows on the skirt. It's actually a tiered skirt, if you can see. It's kind of an interesting skirt because it is tiered, but the tiers are scalloped, which is something I don't see very often. Um, additionally, there is corset lacing on the back and a back bustle. I love back bustles in Lolita. Whenever I see one, it does kind of <laughs> drive up my desire to own that dress. The print is really, really cute. It's um, just mushrooms and squirrels having a good time. I really, really enjoy this piece. And yeah, I'd like to get some of the matching accessories actually because I don't have a lot of accessories that would go well with this dress, but I'll work on that when it comes closer to the time to alter it. Next up for Ivory, we have one of my all-time favorite meta dresses. This is Cinderella Dreams in the medium length JSK. I absolutely adore this dress. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to wear it yet because like Little Squirrel, it hasn't been altered yet, but I am just absolutely in love with this piece and so happy to have it in my wardrobe. You won't really be able to tell on camera, but this isn't printed fabric. It's a flocky print. It's like velvet over cotton. And I just think that is so cute and so genius. And I wish more brands would make prints in this style because I think it really adds a nice textural element to the dress. There's also lots of fun little details like these pearl buttons and on the waist bow, I'll see if I can show it. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little horse charm. This is, as the name suggests, a Cinderella print. Cinderella is not one of my favorite fairy tales. I like it fine, but it's actually a fairy tale that pops up multiple times in my wardrobe, surprisingly. I don't know, I guess the motifs really speak to me, but this is one of my all-time favorite dresses and I cannot wait to someday wear it. So next up we have yet another ivory Cinderella themed dress. Um, this is Brilliant Princess by Metamorphose. This is the standard JSK in the mini length. Um, I have had this dress altered. This shirring panel and back bustle were added by Thistledown Emporium and they make the dress fit just so wonderfully, so comfortably. And it means that the skirt can poof out like crazy. So I highly recommend this style of alterations. Um, if you're thinking of having a smaller dress altered and you are plus size because it ensures that the skirt can poof properly But I really adore Brilliant Princess. It's one of my all-time top three favorite prints um, It is Cinderella themed. It also kind of feels vaguely Swan Lake themed, but All around it's gorgeous. I think it's also like a very unique style of print 
where it sort of looks like an illustration rather than like a printed fabric, if that makes sense, which is kind of my preference when it comes to prints, especially border prints. I, I don't know. I'm like at a loss for words. I love this dress so much. I wear it as often as I can. It's always a joy to wear and to coordinate. And it helped me discover my love for Saks Blue. Hi, as you can see, it's another day. Um, shortly after I started filming last time, that rack completely collapsed, so we're back again. Hopefully I can finish this today, but if not, I'll probably film one more time and then wrap things up. Our next dress is another colorway of the dress that I was wearing last time. This is Memories Garden, and this is the 2022 Winter Special Set. Um, Meta released this as like their year-end special thing. Um, I ordered this one direct from La Foray because it was initially released in La Foray and then the leftovers were brought to the Meta website and I was scared that this colorway would sell out. I was correct, so I'm glad that I did grab it on La Foray. Um, but this is one of my all-time favorite prints. I own it in two different colorways. I'll get to the navy one later. But this dress is just absolutely gorgeous. The print is stunning and I think it works well for pretty much all seasons but especially spring. This is also the first dress I've worn that has a tiered skirt and it's really opened my eyes to how pretty tiered skirts can be. Next up is my first skirt. This is Meta's Fruit Punch Soda or Citron Soda in pink. Um, this is one of my most worn skirts because it's just so easy to throw on. The print is adorable and super casual and I think it works really well for spring and summer. I would really love to own this print in either mint or black but especially in one of the JSK cuts and it's just perfect to me. I really love, this is gonna be weird, but I really love prints that depict glass, and this is one of them. Um, I just think it looks really neat. Um, but this skirt um, was altered. A lot of Meta's full string skirts are pretty plus size friendly. They usually stretch up to a waist measurement of about 110 centimeters, but my waist is a little bit larger than that. So I just had a seamstress add on this little bit of fabric on the waist. And I really like buying Meta's full string skirts because they're so easy to alter and the alterations are quite simple. So if you are plus sized and you're looking for Meta pieces, the full string skirts are a great way to go because they are pretty simple to alter and also because they're really cheap second hand. Um, I got this skirt as a part of a set with the matching socks and headdress all together for 45 bucks. So that's one of the best deals I've ever gotten on a brand piece. Next up we have Meta's Dreaming Heart Lemon, the most recent re-release in pink. Um, this was a print that I had really hoped that Meta would re-release, so I was super excited when they did announce it. Um, I was really torn over getting the pink or the Saks colorway, but at the time of the release I didn't have a lot of pink in my wardrobe and I really wanted to add some pink in, which is why I went for the pink, although I do think that the Saks is adorable too. And I would consider picking it up in the future if I saw it for a good price. But this print is adorable. It features lemons and little teddy bears and flowers. And it's just, despite being very cute, it's very simple. And I think that lends well to like casual wear. And this fabric is very light and breathable, so it's great for summer. So this is definitely a dress that I like to wear very often. Um, one note though, the skirt is very long, so I would recommend a longer petticoat for this one. Next up, we have an absolute dream print for me. This is Meta Crown Label's Honey Picnic. This is the Shuring JSK in pink. This print is very hard to come by, so I was so shocked when I saw it pop up on JP Mercari recently that I just like had to go for it instantly the moment I saw it and luckily I was able to secure it. Um, it just arrived in the mail recently, so I haven't had a chance to coordinate it, but I have had a chance to try it on. I would say that this release is quite plus size friendly. The max bust measurement I would estimate to be about 140 centimeters, but I do plan on moving the buns on the shoulder straps down a bit just because the bodice is quite short. Um, but the main reason I had to have this dress 
is because the print is absolutely adorable. As you can see, it features little bear cubs having a picnic, eating some pancakes, having a jolly old time in the forest. And I think that it is just absolutely adorable. Um, honey cake was one of my first dream dresses, but once I saw Honey Picnic, I was like, oh, this I have to have. The last pink item I'm going to be talking about is the skirt that I'm wearing right now. This is Meta Crown Label's Magical Painting Skirt in pink. Um, it was altered to add these side panels on to make it a little bit poofier and to make the waist a little bit wider. I would say that like the rest of Meta's full shirting skirts, they are somewhat plus size friendly but they don't stretch quite far enough for me. Um, this print is absolutely adorable. I'll insert some footage of it after the fact, but I've always imagined that if I was an art teacher, this is the type of thing I would want to wear to class. Maybe not on a painting day, but probably on a drawing day. It features teddy bears and rabbits and lots of different art supplies. It's super cute and like colorful. I would absolutely love to own this print in the Schering JSK cut or any of the JSK cuts really in any of the colorways. I used to think that I only wanted pink and black but the brown colorway has really grown on me over the years. Next we're entering lavender territory and starting off with my all-time favorite print. This is Night Carnival by Meta's Crown Label. I own this print in two different colorways and I'd love to own it in a third someday, especially in the Schering JSK cut. Um, this print is a little bit um, controversial I'd say. It is for one neon. It is very very bright in person and very high contrast and that doesn't suit a lot of people's aesthetic in Lolita but something about it just speaks to me. It features like real life landmarks and stuff and it's very like pop art-esque. I just think it's so unique. Um, this is the first Night Carnival piece I ever bought and it's the only one that I can currently wear because my other Night Carnival piece still needs to be altered. But this like print just gives me so much joy and I would really love to collect all of the Night Carnival at some point. Next up in the lavender category is Dreamy Little Farm by Meta. Um, this dress is sort of like my designated country dress. I don't wear country very often, but it is a style that I have a soft spot in my heart for. And I think that this pastel colorway is like the perfect blend of country and like more traditional sweet. Um, it features lots of little baby farm animals and eggs and milk jugs and it's just a really it's like both OTT and simple at the same time um, I think I misspoke earlier when I said that Memories Garden was my first tiered skirt this is technically a tiered skirt also but the tiers are constructed in a slightly different way that gives it a little bit of a different shape um, but I really love the bodice on this JSK. It has a little yoke with the corset lacing and the waist bow. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's a little flower charm on the bow on the chest. Um, yeah, this dress is actually super comfortable. It's, I believe, a form of cotton fabric, but it's very breathable. And it's not light, but it's not heavy either. Next up we have the Saks portion of my wardrobe. This is Popping Balloon by Meta's Crown Label. This is another very recent addition to my wardrobe, so I haven't had a chance to court it yet because I still need to have it altered, but I'm hoping to get that done soon. This was always a print that I liked, but I wouldn't say it was like a dream print until I saw it in person and I got to like really see all of the details. It is so adorable. It features lots of different ice cream and hot air balloons made of ice cream, Ferris wheels made of ice cream. It is so adorable and I would really love to own this print now in another colorway and in either the JSK or OP cut because 
I'm just so obsessed with it. Next up for Saks is another skirt. This is another crumb label piece as well. This is cotton candy and it's sort of a black sheep in my wardrobe. I would say that in general I prefer high contrast colorways of prints and this is definitely not high contrast. It's very very pastel, very very low saturation. Um, I don't believe that this is due to damage. Um, judging by pictures of it from release it seems to have always been this way. But I do think it's nice to have a piece like this in my wardrobe whenever I want to do like uber sugary sweet cords and yeah it's just a nice versatile piece it's been altered same way as my other full sharing skirts and it's actually a very thick cotton that this is made of um, also I believe this is from a special set release um, but I don't know which one exactly my only reason for doing this is that the lace trim is a little bit different than the original release mini skirt my last Saks item is Meta's Swan Garden Shuring GSK. This is the mini length version. Um, this was a dress that like I had literally never heard of and then I saw it once on JP Mercari and like decided that I had to have it. I became obsessed with it and so I was able to grab it on Lace Market shortly thereafter. Um, this print is kind of interesting. I feel like you don't see topiary prints that often and I feel like you also don't see the color, like the color combination of Saks Lavender and like dark green together very often, but I think it makes this dress really versatile and you can create a lot of different fun cords with it. Uh, this is definitely one of my most comfortable full string JSKs. Um, with Meta's full string JSKs there is a bit of variation in how far they stretch. I would say that this one stretches the furthest of the ones that I own probably up to 145 centimeters in the bust and the bodice is a little bit longer so I haven't found that I've needed to adjust the shoulder straps at all. It's just super reliable. I wear it very often for that reason. You can cord it dressed up, you can cord it casually. It's just a great workhouse piece in like my wardrobe. Hi again, this is attempt number three at finishing this wardrobe tour. Uh, my health is not the best at the moment, so I didn't really have the energy to get into Lolita and to film, so I picked filming today. Hopefully you don't mind, but let's get back to it. Kicking off the mint section is Flower Bottle, the Shuring JSK by Metamorphose. This is one of my most recent acquisitions. I got it off of JP Mercari. New with tags, with the matching head bow for about $55, which has got to be one of the best deals I've ever gotten on a Lolita piece. And it's new with tags, which is the craziest part. So I have not had a chance to wear this yet, but I am excited to make some cords with it because it's sort of a black sheep in my wardrobe. I would say that although this definitely is a sweet dress, it definitely has like more mature classic kind of country undertones which is not something you see in my wardrobe a ton and i'm excited to make lots of cords that are different for them from what i like usually make with this um i will say i have tried it on if your bust is over 120 centimeters i would recommend sewing down the gaps between the buttons on the bodice because the entire front of this dress is buttoned up um it's not that this dress won't stretch beyond 120 centimeters because I think it would probably go up to about 135 but once you pass a certain amount of like bustage the buttons start to gap a little bit so I think just for aesthetic reasons it'd be better to sew down the front which is what I plan on doing. My second and last mint dress is Cats and Cherry Cake from Metamorphose. Um, this was in my wardrobe tour last year so I'm not going to talk on it too long but it's definitely one of the sweetest dresses in my wardrobe and whenever I'm in the mood to go like ultra kitschy sweet this is the dress I reach for. Um, it comes with a like a sheer mesh overskirt which I at first didn't really enjoy and that you definitely don't have to wear with it. It looks fine without the overdress but I will say when you attach the overskirt it like really amplifies the poof of the skirt in a way that I really enjoy so definitely worth trying out. Picking 
off the navy portion of my wardrobe is Memories Garden. This is the 2021 special set uh, in navy. You saw me wear this at the start of this video. This is definitely one of my most worn dresses because it works both OTT and casual. The cut of the dress is rather simple and it doesn't even have like a, a big waist bow. It's just this satin ribbon that you can tie around the waist. But because the print is so lavish, it really works well for dressing it up. So yeah, this has been my most worn dress for as long as I've owned it. So it's definitely a favorite of mine. Next up in the navy section is Night Carnival. This is the puff sleeve OP. Um, so when I started filming this video, I only owned two Night Carnivals. I owned the lavender skirt and this OP. And since I've started filming, I have bought two more within this week. It's weird how life works out like that. Um, but since then I've bought the lavender A-line JSK and the pink shirring JSK. So the trifecta is finally complete. I won't have them in time to show in this video, but I wanted to mention that here. Um, in terms of the, what's the word? In terms of the navy OP, um, this is honestly probably my favorite cut of Night Carnival. Um, I think that the design is like super adorable and I really love the navy colorway of Night Carnival because to me, it best invokes the theme of a carnival at night. Um, I also really appreciate the, um, cross strap at the top. Uh, part of why I'm filming today is because tomorrow I'm mailing this bad boy out to get altered so I won't have it on hand for a while and I thought it would be a shame to not show it in this video but yeah, my carnival. Love. Next up is the Brilliant Princess Frill JSK in navy from Meta. This bad boy obviously does have to be altered. <laughs> it's not plus size friendly on its base measurements but I am looking forward to the day that I can wear this. Uh, the reason why I haven't gotten it altered yet is because I have the ivory JSK to sort of tide me over until I can get this one altered. And there are other pieces in my wardrobe that haven't been altered where I don't have any other colorways of that print that I can currently wear. So it's all sort of weird math in my head over when stuff gets altered, but what I love about this cut is the scallop hem of the skirt. I think that's so pretty and unique. Plus the corset bodice and this yoke is detachable so you can wear it as sort of a low neckline cut JSK as well. So I really love this one. I think the print looks lovely in navy. I think all of the shades of blue really mesh well together and I look forward to the day that I can wear this. Next up is the 2022 Sailor JSK from Meta. Um, funny story about this one actually, I really love Sailor Lolita and it was the style that sort of first got me interested in wearing Lolita. Obviously I don't wear it very much now as this is my only Sailor piece, but it was really important to me to have it in my wardrobe. And part of what made me go for this specific piece was that when Meta first announced it, I showed a picture of this JSK to my mom and she was so enthusiastic about it that I was like, I have to get it. Obviously I love it, which is why I bought it, but the fact that she loves it as well is sort of a bonus points for me. This is a really simple JSK. It can be worn in a lot of ways. It's just buttons, bow, and this is my only Meta dress that has pockets actually. So bonus points for that as well. Uh, it's a really versatile piece. You can wear it all times of year and I really appreciate it. Next up is Classic Tea House from Meta. I sometimes store this with my navy dresses because it does look navy, but Meta describes this colorway as black and blue because if you look up close, the skirt isn't really navy. It's a brighter blue striped with black. So that's part of why it's not technically navy, but it looks navy to me in any case. I really enjoy this dress. I really love a low neckline cut. I think it was intended to be open bust, but if you have boobs, it's just a known low neckline, which I appreciate. I think it is like a really pretty cut. This dress reminds me a lot of a more classic version of Violet Fane's Otome Nostalgia, which is part of what sold me on this dress because I really enjoy Otome Nostalgia. And yeah, this is one of my favorite new additions to my wardrobe and I can see myself wearing it a lot in the future. 
Next up is my first gray piece. This is Lost Kitten in the Magic Lantern from Meta. Um, this is a really unique dress in my wardrobe. It's definitely not a goth dress, but it's as close to goth as I typically get. Um, I don't typically look for gray colorways, but this sort of colorway in this release really shifted my perspective on gray as a color because I think it is so lovely, this release. I really love lanterns, and the lanterns that are on this print are so gorgeous. I love the illustrations. I also love the black swans and the black kittens. It's just all around a really simultaneously cute and elegant piece, which I find allows me to coordinate it in a lot of different ways. The What's really interesting is that this is the most adjustable Meta JSK in terms of the shoulder straps, because the straps themselves are like belts. There's loops and you can buckle it to whatever height you need. Additionally, I just want to shout out that the waist ties are like little bat wings. Very cute. So yeah, I never anticipated owning a gray colorway, but this has definitely changed my mind on that. Next up is my second and last gray JSK, although you could really count it as a green colorway as well. This is the Girl Detective JSK with Pocket that was released last year. Um, I am a huge fan of mystery novels and especially of the Nancy Drew books. So when I saw that they were making a Girl Detective set, I was like, I have to have it. But unfortunately, me having enough money to buy it and its release didn't line up exactly, which normally wouldn't be a problem because usually, especially when Met is doing pre-orders, their dresses don't sell out immediately. You usually have a couple of weeks to work up the funds to buy their pieces, but because this was not a pre-order, it was just a regular release and there was very limited quantities, it sold out almost immediately and I was so heartbroken. But when I finally did have the money together, about a week later, I emailed Meta and they were able to grab one for me from their Nagoya store, I believe. And I'm so pleased to have this in my wardrobe. I lied when I said the Sailor JSK was my only Meta piece with a pocket. This one does have a pocket. It is a functional pocket, which I really appreciate. Um, it's also probably one of the most interesting dresses I have in terms of cut. It has this detachable capelet. The capelet is also reversible, by the way. Instead of a waist bow, there's this belt that you tie on in the back, and the belt is also reversible. And there's green fabric within the pleats. So lots of fun little details when it comes to this dress. I also had to get the matching hat, obviously, because it is a little detective casquette, which I adore. I will note, however, this dress is made of 100% wool and I live in the desert so I can really only wear this in winter but it's worth it to me just to have. Kicking off the largest portion of my wardrobe, the black pieces, is Twinkle Journey from Metamorphose. I believe this was the third ever piece I got from Meta and it was an absolute dream of mine to own it, especially in this colorway, the black sky with the green grass. It's all I've ever wanted, and I'm so lucky to have it in my collection now. Um, an interesting thing about this release is that when I was at Royal Vegas Retreat, someone who owned the initial release mentioned to me that they like felt the fabric and they told me that it felt like practically identical to the original release from all those years ago. So I think that really speaks to the fact that Meta has been able to maintain their fabric qualities over the year, which is part of why I love them so much that they keep their quality standards high. This is just one of Meta's most iconic prints. The green grass with the black sky in particular just really speaks to me, and I'm so lucky to have it in my wardrobe. Next up, we have the Fantasy Parade Shuring JSK from Meta. This was an absolute dream piece for me, and I'm so glad that I have it in my wardrobe. Um, I really don't see the black colorway come up too often secondhand. Whenever it comes up secondhand, I normally see it in teal. And teal is nice, but I have really only ever wanted it in black because I love the way that it looks genuinely like a sky in a castle. It doesn't look as sort of fabric printy because it sort of seems feasible, I guess. But this is definitely one of my favorite pieces to wear. I really like black and blue together. 
and I find that you can cord this in a really cute and sweet way, but you can also cord it in a more mature way. It's just very versatile. In terms of how plus size friendly it is, I would definitely say it's plus size friendly. It fits me very comfortably at 130 centimeters in the bust. I would say it would probably stretch up to around 135. It's not as stretchy as some of my full string GSKs, but it's definitely not the smallest either. Next up is the Swan Lake Frill JSK from Meta. Swan Lake is one of my top three all-time favorite prints, so I feel really happy to have it in my collection. Um, this is probably my favorite colorway, although I do really appreciate the pink colorway as well. I really love the purple lake mixed with the black sky. It's really elegant and pretty. This dress was altered by Thistledown and Coriam, who added this shirring panel and back bustle. This is definitely one of my go-to special occasion dresses because it is so fancy. Um, I also want to mention that this is one of the few dresses in my wardrobe that has a built-in petticoat, which definitely adds to the poof factor and sort of elevates the fanciness in my opinion. But yeah, I just feel really blessed and lucky to have this in my collection. It's one of my favorite dresses and I try to wear it as often as I can, although I do need to get better about not saving it for just special occasions. Next up is my first angelic pretty piece. This is Magical Etoile. Um, this was recently altered by a local couture shop in my town. They use the waist ties to lengthen the shoulder straps. There's actually a lot more fabric that can be used to lengthen them even more. And then they added the shirring panel and the skirt panel to the back. I am really pleased with how this turned out and I've been so happy making coordinates with it. I just feel like I can coordinate this in a million ways because there's so many different colors in the prints and so many different motifs in the print. Just like the possibilities are endless and that makes me so excited to wear it. This is also my other dress that has a built-in petticoat, so the poof is dramatic when you wear this. <laughs> um, I'm just really happy to have it in my wardrobe. It's one of few angelic pretty pieces that were like legitimate dream dresses for me, so I feel really glad to have it in my collection. Next up is Patisserie Dream, the Shering JSK from Meta. Um, of all of my full Shering JSKs from Meta, this is the smallest. <laughs> um, it fits me at 130 centimeters, but I would say just fits me like it could not stretch any further than 130 in my opinion so i am looking to have this one altered pretty soon part of why i want to have it altered is because the skirt does not poof a lot it's not a very big skirt so when you stretch it to the max the skirt doesn't have a lot of room to poof so i'd like to have a skirt portion added to the back and probably another shirring panel but in the meantime i can wear it as is although it's not something that i would like choose for a meet where I had to be on my feet walking around for a long time because it's not the most comfortable. All that aside, I love Patisserie Dream. It's one of my favorite prints and it wasn't originally a favorite of mine. Um, I had always liked it but I never like dreamed of owning it. I saw it for a good deal on Lace Market which is why I bought it. But once I had a chance to see it up close and personal and see all of the little details in the print and how adorable it is, I totally fell for it. So now I'm really excited to cord this in a lot of different ways in the future and I'm super glad to have it in my wardrobe. Next up is my second and last angelic pretty piece. This is Daydream Carnival. Um, this dress has actually been altered twice. Uh, it was the first piece I ever had altered. The alterations were initially done by Strawberry Paper Doll who added some side panels to the bodice and the alterations didn't really work out. That's it, no fault of Strawberry Paper Dolls. It's totally my fault because I didn't know how to measure myself properly and I gave them the wrong measurements. So I could wear it, but it wasn't comfortable. So I brought it to my local couture shop who's done other alterations for me and they added side panels to the skirt and widened the side panels on the bodice as well as lengthened the shoulder straps and now this is definitely one of my most comfortable dresses and it is just a joy to wear. Daydream Carnival is probably my all-time favorite angelic pretty print. I love the gold details. I love the fact that it shimmers in the sun and this print really made me fall in love with carousels and carousel horses. 
So I definitely owe a lot to my current style to Daydream Carnival. Next is the Meta Hakuoki collaboration JSK. <laughs> this piece means a lot to me because it's based on a video game that I adore and so I've wanted it for a long time for that reason. Um, it's sort of unlike anything else in my wardrobe because it is the only WA piece in my wardrobe, but I really find it interesting and a challenge to coordinate, but sort of a fun challenge. I've only worn this once and I unfortunately did not get any photos of it, but after being altered it is definitely one of my most comfortable pieces, although I'd also like to know that this fabric is exceptionally heavy. Um, the local couture shop who's done other pieces for me added side panels to the jacket portion because it's solid black that just seemed like the most logical way to do it. And although this is technically a JSK, you can actually remove the skirt portion and wear it as just a vest, so it would also work really well for OG, I think. The last black piece in my wardrobe is also the first meta piece I ever owned. This is Sweetberry Gingham. Um, I spoke a little bit about this in my last wardrobe tour, but basically wearing this for the first time and experiencing the quality of Meta is sort of what set me down the path of owning Meta almost exclusively, so this is to blame for my collection. It's a really adorable country style, like sweet dress. I love the illustrations of the jars and the strawberries and the flowers. It's a perfect dress for summer and I'm looking forward to wearing it. And we've done it. We've made it to the end. This is the last dress in my wardrobe and the only red piece I own. This is Patissier in the Forest from Metamorphose, the fur collar JSK. Patissier in the Forest was a dream piece of mine, so when I heard that they were re-releasing it, I had to get it, especially because I adore the cut of this particular release with the fur collar and the bustle in the back. It's just a wonderful dress for autumn and winter. It's sort of my go-to Christmas dress, even though it's technically an autumnal theme. But yeah, I find that this dress is really comfortable and easy to wear, and it's perfect for the colder months. All right, that is everything. Thanks so much for watching my 2023 wardrobe tour. I hope you've enjoyed, even though it's quite late. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.